So anybody who has taken microbiology lab has uh, most likely done gram staining at one point or other. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually describe the principle behind it and relate that to the cell wall the way it is and what differentiates a gram positive from gram negative bacteria. So this is the typical procedure when it comes to gram staining and on the left I have a gram positive and on the right I have a gram negative just to see how they respond differently to gram staining. So typically they would be pretty much invisible and so you need to have something that will show up and uh, able to so we can see the bacteria. And the first stain is crystal violet stain and that results in basically uh, same color in both cases and you get this violet color. And then the second step is an iodine treatment and what iodine treatment does it, it crystallizes uh, the stain so this is often referred to as a mordant. And then uh, that basically solidifies the stain uh, makes it more integrated into the cell wall and so you still have the same result on both sides but then we follow that up with a decolorization step which is essentially an alcohol wash and that wash is what uh, the two bacteria respond differently to so for example gram positive doesn't really have much of an effect uh, due to that decolorization or the wash step um, but the, in the gram negative that stain uh, is lost as a result of that wash and then the gram positive of course stays purple or violet, but we can localize the gram-negative bacteria with a counter stain, which is a lighter stain, saffron and red. And so that bacteria shows up as kind of pinkish uh, red. Uh, the, that is a weaker stain, so it doesn't really have any impact on gram-positive, which is already colored with crystal violet. So let me show you how that works. Um, let's see, the first step was crystal violet. You have a a clear field, the bacteria does not have any stain on it. Crystal violet allows that stain uh, to penetrate through the cell wall. But at that step, it can uh, just as uh, it can still wash away just as easily as it went in. So you need to uh, solidify that. And so that's why we had iodine solution, which kind of crystallizes the stain that's already in the cell wall. So again, this is the same picture showing how the stain is integrated into the cell wall. Uh, the gram positive cell wall is so thick that these crystals are pretty much stuck in there. So when we do our wash, uh, alcohol wash, it doesn't really uh, take that away. Uh, then after the alcohol wash, of course, we have the counter stain, which is saffron and red, but that's a lighter stain. And since this crystal violet is a dominant stain, uh, the saffronin cannot replace it. So even after the wash and the counter stain, it still appears pretty much the same color. So this is the situation in gram positive bacteria. In gram negative, things are different. Even though the steps are the same, we still have the crystal violet solution added, which goes inside the cell wall. We add the iodine solution, which results in crystallization and incorporation into the cell wall. And the difference, though, comes in when we do the alcohol wash. So this is before the alcohol wash. As you can see, there's the outer lipid layer, and then you have the stain, which is integrated into the cell wall. But it's a, thick, a thinner cell wall, of course. So now, if you do the alcohol wash, of course, the alcohol strips away the, uh, the outer layer. So alcohol washes away the outer layer. And then what you have left is an exposed thin cell wall with these uh, stain crystals in there. Because it's such a smaller or thinner cell wall, the wash step, uh, the wash step results in loss of that stain as well from that uh, cell wall. And then of course we can counter stain it with the saffronin stain, which makes us uh, be able to visualize the bacteria. So now this bacteria shows up as pink or light red whereas the gram positive still appears as violet.